If you're the kind of person who's looking for a more casual kind of relationship, it can be hard to find a place with like-minded people. Most dating apps cater to those who want a monogamous relationship or God forbid the other M word, marriage. And maybe that's just not your vibe right now. And hopefully you have discovered like the rest of us that Craigslist is a super sketchy option. This is why you should try Casual X. Casual X is a private, safe, and trusted app where you can connect with other people who are just looking for a good time. And if catfishing has left you a little butthurt in the past, you should be relieved to know that Casual X specifically approves every profile manually to avoid scams and fakes. So download Casual X off of the App Store and give it a try. Your next sexy adventure is waiting for you. Can you tell us about your very first time on a porn set? Like... Take us through walking on set, what your expectations were, what it was like. But you mean back in the day? Yeah, back like, in the day, well, the first, very, the first first very first time on set. Oh my God, it was like, it was a movie in Quebec. It was like, it was like a, a show that was called, um, I don't know the English title, but like it was Grandeur Nature. It was like a, a movie that basically you film people having sex in their like, in like, n- regular place like in public okay okay so like so like you will go there and it was like yeah it was i don't know why it was like the people the girls that i had were on drugs the guy was on drugs and he was just like he was like it was like the the place that it, you can tell the guy was struggling and the girl was like completely wasted and stuff and like she had to drink to do the scene and stuff and he's just like and i was like okay, that's really what, like, we're doing here. And he was in a strip club, dirty strip club, and I was oh like, God. and I was like, oh, my God, okay. So that, like, that not that's not my type of thing. You know, I didn't yeah. really like that. So it was like, for me, I had this vision of, like, porn is just a bunch of girls that they're forced to do porn because they have no money or something like that and they don't so like strange it strange how most people in the world would agree with you on that, <laughs> that, that <laughs> that's but, what most people think that was that was my perception of it and that was my and then you were proved my right experience on that side, of it yeah. you know so like i was like okay i'm out so like when they ask me to do another season no nah, i listen i don't do that so i did after i did documentary like more like mm-hmm. give and take documentary and little show it was my only experience with a porn set. Mm-hmm. But like when I came to the United States on Under the Veil and before that, when I visit the other set for the, to see the, meet the director and everything, I realized that it was not like that at all. Mm-hmm. It was completely different. It just like, it was like everybody was like treated well and everybody's happy. Most of the time I happy to be there. And But I'm always be careful with that because that's my experience of it. Mm-hmm. And and it's also what I bring as a the production manager at that time, and that's what I bring as a producer now. That I make sure that people is safe, that people have food, that people have water, that people are treated well and can respect it and everything. So like, so that's my experience. That's what I try to give to everybody. So like, yeah. But I know that other people don't have that experience. experience. Yeah. Also, so that's why it's always for me. It's always hard to say that. Well, porn is magical and beautiful yeah. <laughs> and great and just say like, come to set and you will have fun because i know that it's not always the case yeah but, it, but like for the most part i will say that's why i said when people ask me that question for the most part if you work with the top tiers of porn you'll be you will have a nice amazing time yeah i mean that's kind of the thing about porn you know people talk about porn and they give it this kind of you know like it's an umbrella and everything's the same in porn and that's the thing like it's not like all porn sets are different. All There's all different kinds of porn. There's all different kinds of directors. So it's, you know, a, a conglomerate of all these different crews and, you know, individuals. So to say porn is this or porn is that is is not accurate either way. To say porn is all great or porn is all bad is not yeah. great. Like it's a mix of all of these things. But people don't really understand that because the only thing that they're fed through mainstream media is that it's all bad. It's all bad. Focus on all the bad stories. I remember when... Hot Girls Wanted came out, the very first one, um, that was focused on the adult industry in Florida. And we all know that, like, the adult industry in Florida is different than the adult industry in Los Angeles. Like, it's very different. There's a lot, it's a lot more amateur there. It's, It's less regulated, at least it was back then. So it's like they took this small little slice of the adult industry and then everybody saw it and was like, oh, porn is, is terrible, you know? Um... And then, so when they did the Hot Girls Wanted 2, the one that I was in, 
you know, when they first approached me, I was kind of like, I don't know. Like that one you guys did was like not the best. And they were like, no, this is different. We like understand. We, we looked at all the feedback we got from the first one and we understand that there's, there's different kinds and we want to do one about like female empowerment. So, so I agreed to do it. And I actually liked my episode though. I know that people had problems with the episodes after that, but I mean, whatever, but it is like, it is so, cause it's also kind of, I mean, we self-regulate too, which yeah. is, you know, it's great for the people that are good at it, but it's also problematic for the people who are not. So it's like, it's, it's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag. And it's also, it's, I don't know, it's, it's hard for me to just like, you need to be sensitive to that matters. And mm-hmm. some people are less sensitive. It's also like an industry is like, is in the, I think now isn't changing. It changed a lot. We talk about it on of hair, but like I think earlier in my career when I start, you still have those old time. I was it called old timer that they yeah. were there for a long time and they work like that and they don't really like my my way of doing things good and I don't know why I'm changing it and it's just like you don't realize that like yes, but your way makes uncomfortable the new generation of mm-hmm. people. Like, oh, if they don't understand, they don't have their place. And no, maybe you just, it would be easier for you to change that way of doing than like having them change. And it's mm-hmm. just because like, it's important that to make them feel safe. It's important that makes, make sure that like people on set, like, just like, you know, like you, yeah, like you said, you keep them on like uh, on set for 12 hours. I cannot just give them a bottle of water and like a bag of chip. I'm just like, you need to have meal and they need to have food there. You need to have something to snack all the way down. And, and you need to have like a good meal at some point, you know, <laughs> during the day. That just, was literally one of the things that like really blew my mind. Like at first that there were so many directors that didn't feed their crew or the models like at all. Yeah. And that like, I could ne- I was like, how can you ask somebody to work for 12 hours and not feed them? Like yeah. that just seems to be the most, most basic thing. And you don't have to get like catering, yeah. you know, but you have to have, you know, I would just go to Trader Joe's and get like wraps and salads yeah. and stuff and like big, like variety of things that people want to eat and then they're happy. But like, it's just so bizarre. That was, that was the good thing. That was the good thing with COVID. Mm. It's just that like, for a long part, when I trying to have meals and stuff, like they were like, well, it's hard to do that. You will do like you. I will buy a, a platter of sandwiches and people will eat that. But like getting a meal was different. But like when COVID hit, one of the rules is like everybody needs to have this individual mm-hmm. pack of food. Yeah. So now we had to order Postmate. We have to order yeah. separate food for everybody. 